international athletic meeting between France and Great Britain at the White City was not only one of the big sporting events of the holiday, it also succeeded in falsifying many prophecies that France would win again. Macdonald Bailey, the Trinidad sprinter, didn't make the best of starts in the 100 yards, but presently he took the lead and went on to win from Archer in 9.7, thereby equaling the British record. In the high jump, Alan Patterson had been expected to win. He cleared six foot four, but so did Prince Adedoyin from Nigeria. And although they tied at this height, Adedoyin took first place, having had less failures. Everyone presumed that Wooderson was going to win the three miles, and the great British runner didn't let them down. He followed the field for a good deal of the way, but he evidently had the race in his pocket all the time. The French hope, Poujazan, who won the 5,000 metres last year, was virtually the only opposition. But Sidney Wooderson, choosing his own time to go ahead, finished at a very fast pace in 13 minutes, 57 seconds. Well outside his own recent record, of course. Britain beat France by 72 points to 57. Sport and sunshine was also very much in evidence at the opening of Cow's Week, the regatta being under the auspices of the Royal Southampton Yacht Club. If some of the pre-war splendour of cows was missing, and the races were mostly for the smaller classes, six and eight metre, dragons and so on, yet the atmosphere was recaptured. HMS Birmingham was there as a formidable reminder of the years of struggle. She contrasted vividly with the white sails of the racing yachts this bright and peaceful August bank holiday. Of course, yachting isn't exactly everybody's pastime, but it still has its place in Britain's holiday round, and for those who can't take part, well, it makes a picture, doesn't it? Epsom drew enormous crowds on city and sub day. Some go so far as to say that all records were broken. Anyway, there was plenty of encouragement for the Epsom August meeting, and with the confounding of the weather prophets who put their money on rain, thousands enjoyed themselves even if they didn't make a fortune. a field of eight for the big race itself and they got away well on the mile and a quarter handicap. For a longish time it looked as if Hobo, the favourite, or the heavily backed Portlight, or Grand Duke, or Dancing Flame, any one of them might pull it off. After Tattenham Corner, Hobo was still somewhere in the middle, then presently he and Dancing Flame were disputing the lead. But when F. Smith called on his mount, Hobo shot out ahead. He went on to win by two lengths from Portlight for the Earl of Rosebery, who stated afterward that Hobo had run his last race. <laughs> 